Let's see, Natasha says, all right, thank you. I don't know the steps I would take to be a Cizio. I have an ed tech startup and some tech background, but I feel like I need to learn more to lead my overseas team. Yeah, Cizio. So for those who don't know, a Cizio is a chief information security officer. This is a C-suite position. So if you think about a typical company, you have a CEO, chief executive officer, a CFO, chief financial officer, COO, chief operations officer, and then usually you have a CIO, CSO, or CISO, depending on the company. CIO is a chief information officer, CSO is a chief security officer, and a CISO is a chief information security officer that basically takes CIO and CSO and slaps them into one position. Generally, you'll see a CISO in companies under 100 people. When you start getting larger than 100 people, if you get up to 500 or more, usually they'll break those apart into a CISO and a CSO job. So the question is, how do you get to be one of those people? This is something I actually get asked a lot by a lot of my cybersecurity students because they think, hey, that's where I want to be one day. And I will tell you, if you've never done that job, you may get there and may realize you don't want to do that job. <laughs> it's a hard job. And the reason it's hard is not because it's technically hard, but there's a lot of things you're going to be asked to do that you may not have the experience for if you're coming from a tech background. And so you said you're coming from an ed tech startup and you have some tech background. So if you are like me and you spend a lot of time in your career doing things like IT operations and project management and pen testing and security and all these things, and you've done a lot of little things, you become a really good candidate for a CISO because they're looking for somebody who has a business background and mindset, who understands budgeting, who understands leadership, who understands the technology to make decisions on it. But it's not necessarily that you're going to be the one hands on keyboard doing something. Unless you're in a very small company, most CISOs and CTOs do not do a lot of hands-on keyboard. They're more focused on running the organization for the IT or security departments and making sure that things are getting done to support the organization. In my company, we are a smaller company. We are under 25 people. We do have a CTO. We don't have a CISO. And our CTO is in charge of our development team. And he does get his fingers dirty and his hands on the keyboard quite often. But his main job is to run his development team, get the budget, pick out the designs, pick out the overarching architecture, and then his team does all of the coding and development. And so that's the way you have to think about these things. So what steps do you need to take to be a CISO? It doesn't hurt to have a background in business, whether that's a business degree or an MBA, a master's of business administration. A lot of times you will see that the CISO and the CIO and the CSO, these folks come from a business area and they are not coming from a technical background. They didn't need it to be in that level. It's really much more about soft skills, about connections, about accounting, about finance, about budgeting and leadership than it is about technology. Technology is one of the things that they can do, but it's not the thing that's going to get them the job. So the best coders, the best technicians are not going to be the ones making it to the C-suite. The ones who can do the corporate governance and the oversight and the policy and the procedure and the finance, those are the people who tend to get to the CIO level. I will tell you, I've been a CIO before, probably the worst job I ever had. I hated it. I never want to do it again. And it's not my thing. Th that being said, my partner on the Your Cyber Path podcast, Kip Boyle, he is a CIO. He has been a CIO for numerous companies in the last 20 years. And he is now a virtual CIO where he works for several other companies that aren't big enough to have their own CIO. And so they hire him on and he does five hours a week with this company and 10 hours a week with this company and 20 hours a week with this company to be their CIO in a virtual manner where he is time sharing across their organization. And so that's another way that I've seen people do it as a modified consulting gig. So as far as what does it take to get to that job? In his case, he had a lot of project management experience. He had a good, strong tech background. He had a good, strong business background, and he was able to get a CIO job at a insurance company probably 10, 15 years ago with that background coming from the tech side. And he, he really enjoys policy and governance and all that stuff. For me, that's not my forte. But to get in that area, that's really where you're going to be looking. And then the other thing I would say is that smaller companies are more likely to take a chance on you if you have more technical skill and less leadership skill. If you're trying to go be a CIO for an insurance company, a bank or somebody like that, they're going to care a lot less about your technical skill and a lot more about your financial and your business background and being able to work in that part of the organization.